Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com and ElectronicLessons.com. Just going to make a quick assembly video today. This is a new uh, fused LM317 DC to DC step down power supply module. Uh, really high quality. Uh, and I'm going to introduce you to all the parts and then we're going to put it together piece by piece. You got three electrolytic capacitors, two resistors, a fuse, the LM317 IC, five diodes, uh, mounting hardware for the uh, both the potentiometer and the LM317 to the heatsink, a transistor, um, your variable resistor with turning knob, one terminal block, on-off switch, custom PCB, one uh, LED to indicate input power, two ceramic capacitors, uh, heatsink, and another uh, a different type of terminal block, uh, a high power terminal block. So first of all, we'll start. We'll start with the uh, passive components. We'll go through the uh, electrolytic and ceramic capacitors and the resistors and the diodes. It's going to we're going to go through it pretty quickly. So make sure to follow along. There are five diodes that go into the board. Now you might have trouble seeing it from here, but on the diode there's a black side and there's a side with a little stripe around it uh, of white paint. Now the diodes are placed uh, here. This is your bridge section, D1, D4, D5, D2, and he, right here there's a little diode placement called D3. Now each of these footprints has a white has a white line on one side. Make sure that you line up the white uh, the white side of the diode to the white side of the uh, footprint from a bird's eye view. If you turn those around you'll, sh you'll have shorts and uh, you'll destroy your diodes. So in the case of D1 which is at the top here, make sure that the white stripe of the diode is facing right. In the case of D4, make sure that the white stripe is facing left. D5 facing left. D2 facing right. And in the case of D3 right here, the white stripe is on the right side. So make sure to be to take you know be very careful when you're placing those diodes in. So solder those into place. Nice solder joints. Don't sh don't have any shorts. And next we'll do the uh, resistors. We're gonna take a few steps here. Uh, we're gonna do the electrolytic capacitors, the ceramic capacitors, and the resistors. Now the ceramic pack capacitors they are non-polarized. The leads are the same size. It doesn't matter which way we put them in. There's no polarity. So uh, we're actually gonna place them in the C2 slot, which is right here, and the C3 slot, which is right here. They're labeled 104. And the ceramic capacitors are also labeled 104, which is 0 0.1 micro. Now, the three electrolytics, uh, what you'll notice is for all three of them, there's a long lead and a short lead. The long lead is your positive lead, the short lead is your negative lead. On the three uh, footprints, C4 is 200, uh, 2,220 microfarad, and the negative side is the big white side, and the positive side has the little plus symbol in it. So make sure you place your long lead in the top and your short lead in the negative side. For the 470 yeah, microfarad, make sure that you uh, place your, uh, your negative in the left side and your long lead positive in the right pin, uh, right above the plus, the plus sign. Same with C5, your uh, 10 microfarad uh, electrolytic capacitor. Uh, negative in the bottom slot, positive in the top slot, longer lead in the top slot uh, from this perspective with the plus sign beside it. So always remember plus sign, longer lead. White, uh, white footprint, negative, shorter lead. And now the resistors. Uh, R3 is labeled 5.1K, but you'll be receiving a 4.65K. Uh, Place that in the R3 slot, and um, right in here, it's, there's an R1 is labeled 220. There's a 220 ohm resistor. Place that in there. Make sure that you don't block the LM317 slot because once we uh, place our transistor, our fuse, and our LED next, we'll be doing our LM317. So we'll solder those into place. Be very careful not to add any, have any shorts, and we'll go on from there. Now, time for the fuse, the LED, and the transistor. Now, the transistor, the uh, 255501 is right here, placed in the Q1 slot. Now you'll notice that there is a curved side facing the capacitor and a flat side. The resistor has a curved side and a flat side. The flat side has uh, the writing on it. Make sure that the flat side faces the flat side of the footprint, the front here, and that the curved side faces the capacitor from a bird's eye view. If you turn that around, your circuit's not going to function properly. Your LED is placed in the LED slot. Uh, your longer lead, there's a longer lead and a shorter lead like the capacitor. The shorter lead is the negative. The shorter, the longer lead faces the resistor in the back, and the shorter lead faces the, where the fuse is. The fuse is actually right here, right below the, uh, 
the LED, and it's labeled FU. <laughs> Sorry, I always laugh at that. And the fuse is this little guy right here. Now, if you place your fuse in uh, and you short the output, your fuse will burn, at which point your circuit will no longer function. It's, prote it's a protector. And so, what you might want to do is just, uh, it's up to you. You can add a wire there to short it, as opposed to putting the fuse in. Or, if your fuse burns out, you can, uh, you can always uh, take it out and put a piece of wire in or a replacement fuse. But this kit will not come with a replacement fuse. So, it's up to you. But the fuse is not polarized, it can go in either way. It's essentially just a conductor that will burn out if uh, there is a short at the output. So, solder those into place, and then we will get to our LM317 and our, uh, our uh, heatsink. Now, before you put the LM317 into place, what you actually have to do is uh, take your, your screw and uh, fasten the LM317 firmly to the heatsink. Now, you'll notice that the heatsink has two pins which are just fasteners, and the LM317 has three pins. Now, the LM317 goes in right here, there's three pins, and uh, the heat sink holes are right here, so you just have to make sure that before you uh, do anything, you fasten this together and try to put it in as one piece. If you put it in the LM317 and you solder it into place, you're never going to get that fastened properly to the heat sink. So as one piece right here with five holes, uh, fiddle around and get it into the, the five holes uh, for the heat sink and the LM317. Once it's firmly in place, solder all five leads. We are just about done. We're going to do the, both the terminal blocks and uh, and the potentiometer in this step. Now what I've done is I've placed the washer and the nut uh, on the head of the potentiometer because what that option is for is in case you want to mount the potentiometer elsewhere via extending it via wires. Uh, but just so that you save that hardware, I uh, I fastened it, fastened the nut and the washer onto the variable resistor potentiometer. We'll put the knob on in a minute. But first of all, this is the input terminal block. Make sure that the terminals are facing outwards. Uh, you might have trouble seeing exactly where this is going, but there is a an input slot right here. Make sure that those terminals are facing outside and that the plastic is facing the heat sink. Solder that into place. Make sure there's no shorts. The uh, variable resistor, the potentiometer, uh, very straightforward. Make sure that it's facing outward. Good solid, uh, good solid solder joints underneath. Uh, when you're done, turn the potentiometer all the way left and place uh, the knob on with the white stripe facing about 6 o'clock. Now that's after you place it on and that'll give you about 6, sorry, uh, 7 o'clock to 5 o'clock. Uh, so about, there's about 300 degrees of rotation there. Lastly, um, the terminal block, make sure that you line up the, the mounting holes. There are no screws here, but make sure you line up the mounting holes and that the red is facing the bottom side from this perspective, uh, and then solder it all into place. That will be your output terminal block, and lastly, we'll put on the power switch. The power switch really only fits in one way, uh, and really, you can't mess it up. The uh, white the stripe goes on top, the, the, uh, the circle goes on the bottom. So fit that into place, make sure it's flush to the board, soldered in, and we'll test it. Alright, some notes before we start. Because we have a bridge rectifier here, we can use, uh, you might, as you said, you can't see the terminal block here very well, but um, you can use ground on the top pin or the bottom pin. Uh, you can use your positive in input on the top or bottom pin. They're interchangeable, it doesn't matter. Uh, because the bridge, bridge rectifier allows for it, it basically just works it out. Uh, you got your on off switch, your output terminal block. Now if you have mounting screws, I highly suggest putting uh, uh, a mounting screw through here and here and putting a nut underneath to hold the terminal block down in place because if you add too much pressure you're going to lift the uh, you're going to lift the um, the uh, leads out of it and it's going to be it's going to it's going to get damaged. So if, uh, uh, if you have glue, great. If you have uh, hot glue will do it two mounting screws, the, the screws, screws will actually go through the board. Highly suggest that you do it. Um, anyway, moving on. Uh, what I will do is I've got, currently, I've got about 18 or 19 volts at my input. So I'm going to measure the output voltage. Which as you can see is at the lowest. 
So I've got turned all the way right, the potentiometer. I'm going to turn it all the way left. As you can see, the output LED turns on. And it goes up to the max. I've got a couple of volts lost on, along the input diodes right here. Uh, if you want, you can bypass them for DC only. Those are for so that you can uh, use AC or DC at the input. So I'll turn it off again, or I'll turn it down to the lowest, which is 1.25 volts. Anyway, I'll put it in the middle and I'll turn it off. I'll, I'll turn the power off. And as you see, that disables the output voltage. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. It's really easy to put together, and it's a really, really nice kit. The only thing I, I, I want to mention again is the fact that you will damage the output terminal block if you do not mount it. Now, it does not come with screws. You'll have to come up with your find your own screw and bolt or just use hot glue. Hot glue, glue will do just fine. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Uh, we will have this up on engineeringshock.com soon, but for the time being, it will be uh, on our eBay store at, through electroniclessons.com. Thanks for watching, everyone.